Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Rui and I make videos reviewing handbags, luxury shoes, um, luxury clothing, and jewelry. My favorite topic personally is jewelry and so I'm really happy and excited to do this video today because I'm going to do an updated jewelry collection video. So I think we're just going to start in the order of the classic fashion houses and show you my entire collection like that and then we'll go into the contemporary brands and then I will show you what I designed and made myself and then I'll show you the miscellaneous stuff, you know, I think that's what we'll do. So let's get started and I think the most obvious one to start with is this huge mountain of stuff which is obviously all Cartier. So this is a travel pouch. It fits a lot of different things, but I use it mostly for my love bracelet. So this bracelet, I usually always have on me. Love bracelet with four diamonds in a size 16. And I've had this for three years now, and you can see it's like in flawless condition. Of course, you're going to have some scratches and dings because this is a bracelet that's designed to be on your wrist and not taken off. The ultimate classic Cartier bracelet that everyone thinks of when they think about the brand Cartier. And I do love the Love Collection. I really do. It gives me such like a 2000s vibe because it was really popular in the 2000s and I do think it's coming back. So... Next, I have this item. I got this for Mother's Day this year from my dogs. Um, those are my only children, and my dogs very kindly gifted this to me. And it is the Cartier Love Earrings, if you can see. I opted for the non-diamond version for these earrings just because I wanted a really casual gold hoop. So because they're just the gold version with no diamonds, I feel like they're a lot more casual and not super elegant or overdressed in terms of how you can style them. So I really love them. The yellow gold is such a classic choice, especially for the love collection. I think you cannot go wrong with yellow gold. Um, and I love to match this with the love bracelet. I just love a matching set. And so I also have this one. I got this for Christmas from my partner last Christmas, like the most recent one. And it's the, again, the Love Collection necklace with the normal love ring here. And this one is in Pave Diamonds. Because the rings aren't fixed to each other, they um, move. And they make this like bell noise. At first I thought it was going to bother me. But I really love this. The nicest part about this necklace. Is the fact that the chain is so thick. If you compare it to my other chains. You can see that it's like significantly thicker and shinier. And I think that's something Cartier does so well. Is their thick chains that reflect light so well. Just, you can compare it to this one. It's a platinum chain from Tiffany. And it's just the difference is night and day. This Cartier chain is beautiful and I really love it. So like I already said, I do love a matching set. So I really like to wear all three of these together with the bracelet and the necklace and the earrings. I think it's so beautiful. I really like that I'm trying to grow my love collection from Cartier like with each holiday or anniversary because it kind of just gives me the impression that they're for really nice occasions and I have a memory attached to each piece and that's not really necessarily how I usually shop for my jewelry so I like the fact that for the love collection from Cartier I always know that this piece I got for Mother's Day, this piece I got for Christmas, or this piece my partner gave it to me for this reason or whatever. So I really like it and it's really special to me. And the final item is in this huge box, except actually it's not because it's on my wrist. And it's the 
Cartier Panther watch in size small in the two-tone gold and stainless steel. So this is a quartz watch and I think it was around 9,000 euros. So you really have to think about whether you want to spend that kind of money on a quartz watch. I'm not really a watch snob so it doesn't bother me that it's um, like a battery operated watch for that price but for watch enthusiasts I think that there is kind of like a general opinion that if you're going to spend so much money on a watch, especially a watch that costs more than like an Omega or a Rolex, you might as well get an automatic watch. So. I'm not a watch snob, I don't know, so just take that with a grain of salt, do your own research to see like what kind of watch you want, how technical you want to be with your watches, or if you just see it as a jewelry piece, which is how I see it. It's just a really beautiful accessory, and the fact that it's two-tone makes me want to mix and match my metals, so it kind of encourages me to kind of step out of the comfort zone of wearing all yellow gold or all rose gold or all white metals like platinum or white gold it encourages me to like you know mix and match you know not everything has to match things can be mismatched and they can be intentionally mismatched to create a really cohesive style i want to talk about ideal they reached out to me and asked me if i would be interested in trying out their modular earrings and other jewelry but i want to try out the earrings because I have so many ear holes, basically, that's why. So they let me choose what I wanted to try and this was about a month ago and I really wanted to wear it like daily before I actually gave my opinion on the brand and their products. So how it works is they basically have like a range of studs you can choose from. I think I chose the largest one. So, as you can see, mine is in white gold. I wanted to try out white gold because I am lacking a lot of white gold in my collection. And as you already know, I love to mix and match. So I'm not like, I don't have a preference for gold. About Ideal, they work with lab-grown diamonds and 14 karat gold. There's rose gold, white gold, yellow gold, of course. And I, like I said, I wanted to try the white gold. I did ask about their white gold and there is a little bit of nickel, which is normal for white gold. There's always a bit of nickel, unless you specifically get hypoallergenic white gold, which won't have nickel as an alloy. So if you are sensitive to nickel, I would recommend you get rose or yellow gold just to avoid any issues. I don't have any sensitivities and I think that this bezel set design of the diamond really really shines with white gold so do you see how cute that is i'm obsessed and you don't have to wear it like that because it's modular so you can just wear the stud on its own if you feel like going for like a more simple look if i can find my ear hole there we go so as you can see i think i chose the larger stud size of the diamond there are three sizes you can choose from and that's just up to your preference or how close together your piercings are. And I got this ear climber because I think it's so cute and it floats. Like because you attach it from the back of your ear, you don't see any connecting bars on the front. And it's such a chic design. I'm not lying, when I received this parcel, I put the earrings on and I kept them on for three weeks straight before I had to take them off and clean them. <laughs> this, so you just close the earring as you would normally and the bottom ear climber just kind of like goes up along your lobe and it's so cute. I'm obsessed and trust me, I am not getting paid to say that I love these earrings. So let me put the other ones on too just to show you. And they have so many different variations, so you basically just have to buy one stud and then you can buy like a bunch of different accessories that give a totally different vibe. Do you see that? I think it's so cute. And I also got this ear cuff from Ideal also in bezel set because I wanted to like kind of have a cohesive collection. So 
I got them all in this kind of round bezel set design. And how this works is, I'll have to take out, no I won't actually, is basically you just take out the push back of the earring. You see here, there's a hole. It just goes through the post of your earring. And then you close the earring again. And then you put the cuff wherever you want. I have an issue with cuffs because my ears are really thin. So I can only wear it on this ear and not this ear. Don't ask. I, I really don't know why, but that was a recent discovery I made after I received these. But look how cute that is. And because it's connected to your original piercing here, if it pulls out and like just gets loose, you're not going to lose it. It's just hanging there. And you'll just be like, oh, let me just put my cuff back, back on. If you've never tried lab jewelry, like lab grown jewelry, I really recommend it. And I'm not new to lab grown jewelry because I do work with it sometimes when I design my own jewelry. I think you can tell I'm not very biased. I'm buying a lot of natural gemstones as well. But lab grown jewelry for the affordability, the quality is on par with natural jewelry, natural like gemstone jewelry. It's more likely that you're going to get better quality for a much lower price compared to natural gemstones. So that's that. And I just wanted to say thank you to Adil. I'm so happy with it. I've already like got my eye on a few other things that I want to buy from the website because now that I have like the stud, I can just buy like these accessories, the modular accessories and mix and match. So you get like two earrings in one or three earrings in one, especially with like the cuff I showed you and stuff. It's so fun. It's really fun. I want to talk about the only other watch I own, and this is the Bulgari, I think it's called the B01, but I'm not exactly sure. This watch is probably like 20 years old. My mom got it in the 2000s, and she gave it to me before I moved to Europe, just because I didn't have like a nice watch. And I, admittedly, I do not wear this watch very often. It's not like the most versatile watch, to be honest. Like. If you compare it to the Cartier Tank, which is like just the ultimate classic watch, you can pair it casually, you can pair it like a little more dressed up. This one, it's just like inherently casual, but I do really like it because it's um, got the date, what is that called, the calendar on it, so you can set the date. Is it even correct? It's not correct, so. <laughs> Bulgari still sells this collection, so. Although the style is pretty distinct and not necessarily really my style, I think it's really still cute and it can be styled like really casually, which I love. And I have only one more piece from Bulgari and I did talk about this before. When I bought it, I did an unboxing. This is the Bulgari Serpenti ring. So Bulgari has like a really strange way to size their rings. This one, I think they all came like only in letter sizings. So I don't know if you can see, but it says small. There's an S. Probably can't see. But this is the size small, and they have obviously small, medium, large. So um, each ring fits a range of finger sizes. And here's how it looks. This is in yellow gold. It's so beautiful. It's so different. And it's not like overly chunky, but it is like so substantial that... It just catches your eye and the snake motif is so beautiful. It just wraps around your finger, which I love. So those are my two Bulgari pieces. I really want the Serpenti bracelet, but it's a bit expensive and I need to kind of think about it because I've been spending a lot of money on jewelry recently. And now we'll move on to Tiffany. I have a few Tiffany pieces. This is the Tiffany Small Cross Pendant made out of diamonds and platinum. This was also a hand-me-down from my mom. Um, it was super ultra popular in Japan in the 2000s. And trust me, like most Japanese people aren't religious, especially not Christian, but everyone was wearing this. And I love it. 
if you're an atheist, you wouldn't want to wear it, but if you were open to ideas of religion and spirituality, then you might as well, you know, enjoy the motifs that come with it. So, that's that. It's a diamond pendant. Really popular style. You'll find it from any brand in different stones, um, depending on your budget. And yeah, I really like it, especially because it's from my mom, so... So I did do an unboxing of this ring. This ring is so expensive now. I thought it was expensive when I bought it two years ago, but now I would never buy it for the price that it, they're selling it for now. I'm sorry. They're out of their mind because look how tiny these diamonds are. It's like a nothing ring. It's beautiful. It is so beautiful. I love it. Like, it's so beautiful, but the price is crazy. I think I got it for about 5,300 euros two years ago. I'll put the price of the ring now. I love it. I think it's um, kind of masculine in a cool way and gives me like a 2000s vibe, which I love, as you already know. I did get it replated recently with rhodium. Um, if you don't know, a lot of white gold pieces, especially if they have diamonds in them from... All fashion houses like Cartier, Tiffany, Bulgari, whatever, are white gold with a rhodium plating. Rhodium is a very white metal, which enhances the pure whiteness of the white gold color. And it is um, something that you have to keep in mind, that if you're getting a white gold piece, you might have to get it replated with rhodium. Because, especially for rings, you're like touching things, your hands are scraping against surfaces, you're washing your hands... And after a few years, the rhodium plating does wear off. I'll put a picture here of how this ring looked before I got it replated. And honestly, it was a huge hassle to get this ring replated because I don't know why, but at the boutique I went to, they acted like they've never heard of anyone asking for a rhodium replating. And I was telling them, listen, like I work with jewelry, I know how it works. And I told them, like, listen, I've had jewelry from Tiffany in white gold replated in Japan before. I just want you to tell me the price so I can pay it and you can do it for me. And then in the end, I paid like 140 euros for them to replate it, which also includes like a polishing just because to replate um, a jewelry piece, you do have to repolish it. And now it looks brand new, so I'm very happy with it. Just a few more things to show from Tiffany. So these are the cutest earrings ever. They're my Tiffany Bean collection from Elsa Peretti. These small ones are, I believe, 5 millimeters in rose gold. And the bigger ones are 9 millimeters in yellow gold. And they're so adorable. I love wearing them together as a pair. Um, as you know, I like to mix metals. I'm not someone who needs to have all yellow gold, all rose gold, all white gold, all platinum. I mix them and match them as I please. And these are also very affordable, you know, considering that it's from Tiffany. So if you're kind of thinking of getting a starter piece, um, like starting out your fine jewelry collection, I would really consider getting the bean earrings because they are a classic, classic shape from Tiffany. They will not go out of style. They were popular when they came out. They're so popular now. I, I think actually the rose gold earrings are the first fine jewelry pieces I ever bought and it must have been like four years ago or something. So I was in London. Let me take it off so I can show you. I was in London two weeks ago and if you know about the Jubilee Market in Covent Garden, it's my favorite market in the world on Mondays and it's just the entire Covent Garden Jubilee Market is like full of independent sellers, collectors selling their collection, and of course, that includes jewelry. So there are a few independent sellers who collect like antique jewelry, you know, especially in the UK, nine carat jewelry is very popular. So there's a vast collection of nine carat jewelry available for you to purchase like from 100 years ago and stuff. And I, oh my God, I love antique markets so much. I could just browse and look and speak with vendors all day long. That's how much I love the Covent Jubilee market, antique market on Mondays. 
So I was like obviously looking um, throughout the jewelry section, the fine jewelry section specifically, not really like the silver jewelry and stuff. So I saw this bracelet in the case and I was like, what is that? Like, is that really Tiffany? And it caught my eye. It's so heavy. This is 18 grams of 18 karat gold. Um, it's the Stars and Hearts Link Bracelet Chain from Tiffany and it's um, Hallmarked T Co 750 and the seller, I, I think he was not an independent seller, he was actually like a jeweler who opened his doll during the antique market so of course I did my due diligence, I checked like all the eBay listings and all the listings I could find online for this particular bracelet checked every single detail and it all checked out it came with the original box and the paper box like that the box goes in also so the only thing missing is the receipt and it's such a random bracelet that it's 100% real and I also got it um, cleaned in Tiffany right after purchasing it and they wouldn't clean it unless it was 100% a Tiffany piece so I have no doubt about it the only thing I haven't done is like a gold acid test which I'm not going to do that I don't want to scratch this just to test for gold when I already know it's gold so the price that I got this uh, bracelet for he was selling it for 950 pounds I haggled it down to 800 and I got this beautiful 18 karat gold bracelet from Tiffany 18 grams of 18 karat gold for 800 pounds and that is probably a high that I will never experience again in my entire life. And I love this because it's such a juvenile design. I'm sorry, it's such a stupid design. And to be made in 18 karat gold, that just like those two polarizing concepts was what drew me in. And I'm so happy with this purchase. And I'm so happy because nobody knows about this bracelet. Like it's so rare. And if you check online, they're all selling for like 1,200, 1,300, 1,400 euros. So I feel like I got such a good deal. I think it's so in style now too. And I just feel like I won the lottery. I can't even stop thinking about this bracelet. Like, it makes me so happy. Okay, moving on. That was Tiffany. So we've gone through Bulgari, Tiffany, and Cartier. And the last one is Van Cleef. So I just have a few pieces to show. This is the Van Cleef Mother of Pearl necklace, the Alhambra. I, I think it's the vintage size. And as you can see, it's got a Mother of Pearl inlay, which is a really beautiful material. The gray of the Mother of Pearl goes so well with the rose gold. Just a very classic necklace. And I love to wear my Van Cleef necklace with my Van Cleef bracelets, which I have two here. So, let me make sure this doesn't fall. What I have here are two of the same kind of bracelet. If you can see here. This one is the Hammered Rose Gold Sweet Alhambra bracelet, and this one is the Diamond Pave Yellow Gold Sweet Alhambra Bracelet. They're both six motifs, which means there's um, six Alhambra flowers on it. I have had both of them shortened a bit because I do have very thin wrists. I think they're both around 16 centimeters. But this one is available now as well. It's so good because you cannot see any wear on it at all. I've had this bracelet for three years and it looks brand new. So if you want a Van Cleef bracelet that's not going to like be super easily damaged and it's not going to show wear at all, I really, really, really recommend their hammered variety. And this is my very treasured Van Cleef piece. This was a limited edition bracelet that was only sold in Tokyo, I believe in 2019. I'm not sure if that's exactly the day, the year. But you can't get this anymore, it's very limited. And I think it's so cute and dainty. It's pavé on one side, so the other side is just like the setting. You won't really see the diamonds, but... Those are my Van Cleef pieces. And oh, 
Okay, actually, I do have other Tiffany and Cartier pieces I forgot to talk about. They were, like, stored separately, so I forgot about them. So, these are the Just Un Clou Pave earrings. Basically, it's just, like, a nail motif, which is the entire point of the Just Un Clou collection. And I think this one looks amazing in um, this white me white gold metal compared to yellow gold or rose gold. So that's that. Sorry, I totally forgot about this one because it was on my Hermes tray and not in the jewelry box. And here is, uh, I think it's the size small Victoria earrings from Tiffany. So there are four marked keys diamonds made in the shape of stars or flowers, depends on how you want to see them. And I believe these are in platinum not white gold but yeah just a really classic piece so i like to wear it like that so that's how that looks it's really it's like a very classic timeless design i'll just keep that in there so now that we're done with the legacy brands i'll go over the costume jewelry i only have two this i don't know if i've showed you before but it is a dior brooch but it's basically just the Dior logo, the CD, Christian Dior, in a pavé with synthetic diamonds and a pearl. And I think it's so cute. I like to wear it um, not on my shirts, but on my coats in the winter. And the next piece I have that's also costume jewelry is from Bottega Veneta. This is the new collection, actually. You know how everyone has those Bottega earrings? the big huge water drop ones. I was interested in that, but I didn't want to get it just because everyone has it, so I wanted something a bit different that I haven't seen before, and these I definitely have not seen before. I think it's so beautiful. It's got a um, knot design with a combination of leather and metal as the materials, and the fact that it's sterling silver is better than the fact that it could be brass. So here's how it looks. I think it's such an interesting piece, especially if my if I have my hair up. I think it looks really nice. And it's definitely not something that everybody has because everybody has those water drop earrings. And these are a lot more interesting, especially the combination of the different materials and stuff. And you know what? I'm so stupid. I forgot to talk about the jewelry I'm wearing. So the ring finger, this one is a present I got also last winter from my dogs for Christmas. And it's the Tiffany knot ring in the small version with the pave diamonds in rose gold. I think it's really beautiful. It's so simple, but it's just like really, it's really cute. It's a very cute design. This one I showed you in my most recent video. It's the Hermes Kelly ring. And I wanted a thick rose gold ring as an alternative to the love ring because I don't know why the love ring just doesn't look very good on my hands but I thought this one was really cute and this is a platinum diamond ring that I designed myself you can see here it's just the classic solitaire it's very similar to the Tiffany solitaire except I designed it to have mini claw prongs instead of the tab prongs that Tiffany does technically my engagement ring even though I designed it myself I just wanted like a traditional engagement ring because I never really got one because we were never really engaged I just got married and I wear it with my wedding band which is the Chanel Coco Crush in the mini size and I've had this um, for over three years and yeah, my husband has the same ring in also uh, the rose gold or beige gold color, whatever Chanel calls it. And he has it without the diamonds. And I think it's so unique. We get so many compliments on this um, like wedding ring because I feel like it's a really like unique design, you know? It's like a quilted band and the pave is so beautiful. So that's what I have on my hands. One pair of earrings that I still have to show you that I think every woman needs at least one pair and that is a pair of real pearl earrings these are from the japanese legacy brand tasaki 
So in Japan, there's like two main pearl companies that are world famous. One is Mikimoto and one is Tasaki. And this is from Tasaki. And they're in white gold. This blue gray pearl is called a Akoya Shinju, which means they're, I think it's called Akoya pearls in English. But it's such a beautiful blue gray color. It's just every woman needs at least one pair of pearl earrings because they're going to be a lifetime piece. Of course, they are like very delicate natural materials, so you have to be careful. And I don't wear it all the time, but I am very glad to have them in my collection. And yeah, so now I have only two things to talk about and oh, three things actually. And they're all things that I designed myself. So this I showed you in my previous video. So let me show you how it looks. I am so happy with how this design turned out. Do you see it's cut like a lozenge or a Pez candy? That's that. And what else did I design? This tennis bracelet is um, like five point something carats total set in platinum. These are lab grown diamonds. It does not flip whatsoever. So the diamonds are always facing out. I never have to adjust the bracelet. Basically, since I got it, I have not taken it off and it's so beautiful. And I just had to go with platinum because it just feels more premium. So yeah, that's a really beautiful piece that I'm in love with. Okay, so of course my battery dies on the very last thing I wanted to talk about. But very quickly, it's the last item I designed and it's this beautiful, beautiful 70s style Asher cut ring that I designed. It gives like huge 70s mafia wife vibes. It's a, a champagne Asher cut diamond in the center, 1.8 carats I believe with baguette diamonds on the sides, set in 18 karat gold, and it's so beautiful. It just gives like very boss vibes in my opinion, and I love to wear it with the Bulgari ring on the other hand, because it's just like two very impactful rings. I really love it. Um, I designed this for my 28th birthday as a gift to myself, and I'm so happy with it. I've never seen a ring like this in my life and I have absolutely no complaints. I get so many compliments. This set right here, all yellow gold, I think it looks so great. So that's all. It took me a while to go through everything, but that's because I have a lot of jewelry. Um, just want to say thank you to Adil for sending me this jewelry to try out. I am a huge fan. And it's really nice to be able to kind of try out contemporary brands in combination with the legacy brands. Especially as somebody who loves jewelry and loves designing jewelry. This like modular design of earrings is just so brilliant. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye.